Something always leads me back to the Vox tone. Only Vox does Vox. Hey, so I like the band Radiohead, so much so that they've essentially influenced all of my early guitar gear acquisitions. From the Johnny Greenwood inspired Tele Plus modded guitar, to my Fender Deluxe 85 solid state amp that I used for gigging for years. Perhaps the biggest influence that took me the longest to acquire was my first tube amplifier, which was the Vox AC15C1. That was about 10 years ago, and to afford the amp, at the time I had to sell my 2005 American Standard Telecaster. That's how much I wanted the amp. I wanted the tube amp. So anyways, years later, and after owning a couple different AC15s and numerous other Vox amps, the AC4, AC10, AC15 head, AC3, 2, 7, 9. Do those exist? No. Something always leads me back to the Vox tone. And I love my Fender amps. Don't get me wrong. They're not going anywhere. They're awesome. But only Vox does Vox. Vox is Vox. Vox, 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 Vox. Am I swearing? What kind of double talk is that? It's English. So, 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 so. So I've teamed up with Sweetwater and they are the sponsor of today's video. And thank you to them for supporting me over the years. They have provided me with a Vox AC15C1 and a Celestian Alnico Blue speaker or Celestian, however you want to say it. If you want to get either of these items or something completely different, not, a, not, not like a car or a bicycle, like, I mean, guitar stuff. Check out the links in the description and you can use my affiliate links that also help support the channel. The more you use those, the more it supports Sweetwater and the more they support me. It's a beautiful cycle of gear. It's amazing. So I have the gear. Can you guess what I have lined up? I can't wait to tell you. So we're going to do something really cool. Can you tell I'm reading a teleprompter? Uh, so we're going to do something really cool. No, I'm not. Uh, we're going to start with a blind tone challenge. Green versus blue. I've recorded some riffs and they're going to be going through each speaker. You have to guess which is which. Or just let me know which one you prefer. Wait for this. Then I'm going to show you how to swap a speaker and install the Celestian Blue. There's some labor involved, right? So, so I'm going to be doing that. And then if you decide it's worth it for you... I'm going to put up a quick disclaimer. Opening up an amplifier can have risks. I can't be sure specifically what they are. Warranty, health, various, etc., etc. So I'm going to say this. Don't do it. But this is what I did. Or don't listen to me at all and do what you want. Whatever is best for you. You are an adult and you are responsible for you. So anyways, that's my <laughs> disclaimer. We'll do a demo and walkthrough of the AC15C1X because it's got the blue loaded. And I'll quickly show you what the amp can do. Well, not quickly. We're going to go through it and take our time. Uh, it's honestly such a dynamic amp and you don't even need pedals. I mean, you can get pedals if you want, but it's got so much stuff. Okay, you ready? No, I don't care. Let's go blind tone challenge now.
You always ask, why is that clock broken back there? Why is that clock always broken? You're broken. You're a clock. This is a weird dog, don't you think? It's like the dog is connected to the guy or something. Okay, we're back. Did you guess it? And uh, I want to make it clear. I don't think one speaker is better than the other. It's more of a case of them being different and unique. And the Alnico Blue costs more, like a lot more. I can only assume it's because of the materials being used. But some people might equate higher price, meaning better and greater, but not necessarily, right? It's You got to listen for yourself. It's what's more gooder to you, yours guys's. That's some Northern Canada talk for you, Northern Ontario. But you'll probably have a, a favorite and you can let me know in the comments. Now let's swap out the speaker. But how did you do the blind tone challenge if you didn't already swap it out? Nobody, we won't know. Disclaimer. Warning. I don't recommend you do this. Hire someone. I'm not responsible for any damage. There, since I'm doing disclaimers, how about also look both ways while crossing the street? When you drive a car, wear a seatbelt. Do I need to say that stuff? I don't know. All right, first part, take these screws out the back. We're taking out this little back panel on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I had, I couldn't help it. Sesame Street's ingrained in my brain. That's normal. If you get that loud sound, there might be some glue or residue sticking on it. So let's uh, just kind of push them in. Okay, and then you just flip it over. You see it's got this one piece of wood. And then we're just going to put it aside for safekeeping. And let's take a close-up look here. We got the reverb tank. Hopefully I added some really cool reverb effect for that Other in post-production. Otherwise, that's not cool. But that's cool. Real reverb tank, right? Okay, let's get the rest of the screws off. There's quite a few. This took me a little while. That's why I'm speeding it up. So you don't have to sit through me unscrewing the screws. Okay, again, normal. You can hear the sound. You know, it's just the wood shrink and grow and it's the Tolex and the plastics and stuff grinding and twisting. Do I really need to explain it? I just like to push the screws back in here to keep them for safekeeping. And then I'm going to take this back panel and just put it over on a table to keep it for safekeeping, which I already said. So let's take a close up look now, all this cool stuff inside. Okay, cool. Look inside here. You can see the pots connected to the, the circuit board and then all the tubes and plugs and wires, stuff I don't know anything about. I'm not an electrical engineer. And you got the green back speaker. That's what we're in here for. That's the target and it's the hardest thing to get to. So I just will mention one more thing. I did a disclaimer, but I'm trying to keep one hand in my pocket and I'm just using one hand to work on the amp. There's a couple points where I wasn't able to, so, you know, this is a, can be a dangerous thing. And I mentioned that before and I'm dead serious. Pun intended, just be careful. Don't do this, don't, don't be like me. Anyways, I'm unplugging the speaker and I'm gonna take a picture of it so I know which one uh, plug goes into which, because I always forget. There are only four screws to take off and take out, so it's not too bad. One of them I had to get a shorter screwdriver. I couldn't reach underneath the panel. At the back, you'll see here in a second. Yeah, two of them. Actually, two of them were easily reachable, and the other two underneath the head, I call it, right? Couldn't get to it. I have to get a shorter screwdriver, so no problem. Just get underneath there, and again, try not to touch the amp with two hands. Okay, at this point, I've got the speaker loose, and I'm like, I can almost get it out. So do I take the tubes out and the reverb tank, or what do I take out? So yeah, the reverb tank has to come out. Four screws, very easy to remove and put back in. And then the tubes, I thought that could be it, but no, you actually have to take the whole chassis out. So I'll save you the time. Just leave the tubes and take out the chassis. Almost got the reverb tank out. If you've never seen one up close, let's take a close look. This one has three springs and there's different types of reverb tanks, different lengths. Just want to show that for a second. So taking out, uh, I tried to take out a couple tubes. I thought I could do the tubes, but no, you just can't get it. It's, it's not enough space to get that metal frame it's blocking the speakers, so yeah. Take the chassis out, like I mentioned. Couple screws on each side. Actually, really easy to take out. And this is the part where I did have to touch the amp with two hands, so. And then you gotta find a place to balance it, so I kinda just lifted it up and hung it on the corner of the amp, so it's stable, it's not gonna fall over, and then I can work on the speaker from there. And then the speaker should just come out, super easy. It's just sitting there, right? The four screws were holding it in. So, here's the Celestian Greenback speaker. Nothing really to see here, except the Greenback speaker, everything to see there. And here's a side-by-side -side profile shot. Really shows you the size difference. Basically the uh, the top part. It looks like a bell on the blue and like a flat puck 
on the green back. And let's get that installed. Four screws, really easy. Same screws, same positioning. Have the wiring coming out the left side like it was before, and you're good to go. Okay, so you get your speaker put in, just like I said, four screws. And then you're gonna just basically redo what you undid before. Put the chassis back in, four screws, and the back panel. Super easy, I'll let you just have a, a listen to this calming music. You can go to sleep right now if you want, if you're chill. I find this music really chilling. Okay, enjoy, and then we'll uh, go and do some more stuff. There you go. Let's talk specs and hear it. So what is the AC15 C1 and C1X? It's a 15 watt tube amplifier. What kind of tubes? You got three 12AX7 preamp tubes, two EL84 power amp tubes. So the 15 isn't just a catchy name, it actually means something. The C1 comes with a 12 inch Celestian Greenback. C1X comes with a 12 inch Celestian Alnico Blue. And uh, two channels, you got your normal top boost, normal and top boost, sorry. I hope these channels' names are self-explanatory. You got a two-band EQ, you got bass and treble on uh, the top boost only channel, then you got some built-in effects, probably some of the best in-amp effects. You got a real reverb tank, and you got tremolo with a depth and rate control. All right, so let's hear it in a second. So when people describe the Vox tone, they always use the word chime. So it's like a chime amp. Well, I'm gonna be different, because I'm just different. So I'm gonna say it's a jingle jangle tone. I'm sure the marketing would be horrible for that. Vox rocks your jingle jangles. All right, you got your master volume, great to have. And you can dial in the volume down low and crank up the channel volume and you get some great tones at lower volumes. And then we've got the tone cut, it's a reverse knob. You have it all the way to the left, has the tone fully open, then clockwise you cut away the tone. Great for pickups that are ice picky. Tremolo, really nice sounding. Not my favorite effect, but this one sounds great. And having the depth and the rate allows you to create a bunch of different wavy type sounds. Reverb is a real reverb tank. I mentioned that before. What impresses me is you can crank it and it's not insane like some amps. It doesn't wash out like a, some digital reverbs do that. But anyways, it always sounds good to me. Bass control, it's, uh, it controls the bass. The treble control controls the mids. No, I'm just kidding, controls the treble.
channel volume, use this along with the master volume. The higher you turn it, the more gain. So it's essentially a gain control. And you max it out and you got some rock tones. <laughs> idea for humbuckers. Now let's plug in a Strat, get some single coil stuff. Let's compare the normal and the top boost quickly so you can just hear which one. Maybe you can decide which one sounds best to you. All right. One last guitar change. I'm trying to give you lots of different tones and comparisons here. Usually I don't spend this much time doing tones in a video, but I thought this was important. So enjoy. Here's uh, George. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. I love the amp. Always have. The 15 is my favorite. The AC-10 is really good as well. This one just has more features built in. I also like the Super Mini Beetle. Uh, the 15 head has an attenuator. Anyways, I've done tons of videos on these amps. You can check out my videos and reviews and demos. And I'll put some in the cards. Or you can, if you Google Landon Bailey Vox or type it in on the YouTube thing, you'll find stuff and things like that. So I'll put some in the descriptions too. Normally, I talk about pros and cons in a, a, like a review demo video, but I'm not really doing that here. This is more just like... This is the blue. What does the blue sound like? And, you know, green versus blue at the beginning. Which one did you like more? Speaking of which. And uh, would you swap out the green for the blue or just leave the green? So now I've got the option to go back and forth if I want to. A little bit of work, right? Anyways, let me know which one you like. Again, super thanks to Sweetwater. Check out the links below. Vox rocks. As always, play guitar and have fun. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.